Hey you guys, it's your girl King Kelsey with the Keeping It Real series and today's topic is a little on the heavy side so I hope you're ready. So often as black men and black women we are fighting against our oppressors, right? But more often times than not as well, we're fighting against ourselves, whether that's in the community or in our heads. And one of those big issues is colorism. Honestly, I didn't realize it was a big an issue as it was until I started kind of seeing it everywhere within my own family dynamics. Surprisingly, even myself, a few of my friends, clients, things like that. And so I kind of wanted to talk about it because obviously this is something that we're still fighting and something that we need to break. The question is, am I black? Does my skin being light disqualify me? Or does my hair being kinky qualify me? Or if I have curls, does that disqualify me? I mean, I have lips, booty, shape like any other black woman. What makes me less black? If I speak proper, am I less black? If I dress a certain way, have certain mannerisms, go to an all white school, am I less black? If I am not from this country, am I less black? If I am the only light-skinned person in my family, same mom, same dad, everyone else is darker, am I less black? These are real questions. These are real internal dialogues that people are facing every day, whether they realize it or not. And it comes from the outside, it comes from our community and it comes from ourselves and it's something that we need to nip in the bud and we need to cut it off because it's a real issue um i know for me uh personally speaking uh i help my mom go natural so she's all natural and if you've seen her if you know her she's a redhead and she likes playing in color like me you know and so Finally, she went natural. She was thinking about growing out her hair, right? And so she has this fro now. And she went over to the mirror one day and she was like, oh, I'm I'm a black girl now. I'm a black girl now. And I was like, what? I was like this. And this is a woman who raised me to understand that I am a black woman. But for her to think that she wasn't made me wonder like where did that come from and i said mom you've always been a black woman i said just because you have a fro don't make you more black you're the same black you know and she was like well i'm a black woman now and i'm like no no you're still black and we had even put in like some faux locks and i guess she felt more black with the faux locks and this is coming from a light-skinned woman all her siblings are light-skinned except one and she has green eyes. What would make her think that she was less black? What experiences did my mom have that made her think she wasn't who she was? Um, I know for me growing up, my first experience even understanding and knowing that I was black was when I was a child and I was in like before kindergarten um, daycare and there was this uh, other little boy light skin like me he may have been a little bit darker and I told him that he was white because I thought that I was white and so his mom says to my mom later you know I'm mad at Kelsey and she's like why are you mad at Kelsey and she says because she told such and such that he's white and now he only likes white girls and so <laughs> my mom you know going home from daycare and she was like Kelsey, you know, did you tell such and such that they're white? And I was like, but he is white, mommy, he is. And she was like, no, Kelsey, he's black. And I'm like, no, mommy, he's white. And then she said, Kelsey, what color 
do you think you are? And I'm like, mommy, I'm white. And she's like, no, Kelsey, you're black. And I'm like, no, mommy, I'm white. And she was like, Kelsey, you're black. And in that moment, I came to an understanding of what black meant. And I said the funniest thing to myself. I said this to her, I said, well, if I'm black, I'm light black. Because to me and to any kid, right? You know, we think of black, we think literally darker. We don't think culture. We don't think of people. We think of color, right? Because we're taught our colors, hence the topic of discussion, colorism. We're not taught culture because we were stripped of it. Even though the Bible that most of us read every day is our history, people don't teach us that those are black people in that book. We forgot who we were, right? And so we're taught a color and not a culture. And so even when, you know, with the whole COVID thing and Corona going on, I went back home and I have a little cousin. He's darker than me, probably like a caramel complexion. And my other cousins are like brown skin and like milk, uh, chocolate, that kind of thing, right? And I have some other light skin cousins. And so we're all family. He knows we're family. And so we were talking about being black and he's like nine or something. And I was like, yeah, because you're black. And he was like, I'm not black. I'm like yeah you are and he was like i'm not black and you're not black <laughs> and i laughed and i was like black is not a color i said black is a culture and regardless of what tone or shade of black that you are or that you're born into you're still black and i think he got it you know and the fact that we have to teach our kids that is something that just like we teach our kids about the police and racism we need to teach our kids about colorism we need to teach our kids that regardless of what anyone says to you or how you how you think you may look to someone you are who you are you're a black man you're a black woman and be proud no matter what shade or tone you are you know i had another client who was basically saying that she's the only light-skinned person in her family and she grew up around a lot of white kids and she felt like an outsider within her own family just internally you know and there's times that she doesn't feel black and when i tell you your sister god locks down to her hips honey but she's lighter than me and she's married to a black man brown skin like caramel darker caramel complexion and there's times where she doesn't even feel black because of what she's gone through. I have friends who are brown skin, who grew up around a lot of white people who have gone through, you know, the whole, oh, you talk white. Oh, you dress white. Oh, you speak proper. You speak like those white people. So, I mean, the question is, does ignorance define us? It does, does what they kept from us define our color? I mean, that's a real thing. If my hair weren't kinky like it is, and it's kinky, it's in the force, would I be defined as black to someone looking at me? You know, both my parents are black, I'm not mixed. I have hazel green eyes. My mom has green eyes. I'm still black. I have another friend from Panama and she wasn't born here. So she, her family and her generations weren't born into slavery in the US. Don't really know the history of Panama and how everything worked out there. But technically to us, she would be Afro-Latina, right? A black woman. And she came here and she told me, she was like, I would tell my mom all the time. It just made me feel so bad because when I was in school here, all the black girls told me I wasn't black, that I was different like she was some exotic creature. Well, honey, we all come from the same place, Africa, okay? We're all black. And no matter what shade of tone of black that you are, don't let anybody from the outside asking what you are or anybody from the inside trying to tell you who you aren't or your own insecurities, you know, 
when you're interacting with people about how they treat you or how people don't may, may not connect to you or reconnect with you, tell you who you are. You're a black man and you're a black woman and no one's words can change that. I specifically remember when I was on the ship and I had just bought these earrings and they said 100% black. And one of my white crew members read them and chuckled to himself like, yeah, okay. But he doesn't get to define me. He doesn't get to tell me who I am. I know who I am. And that's exactly how we have to look at the rest of the world. And sadly, sometimes even our black sisters and brothers, nobody can define you. God defines you. So for this video, I kind of just want to shout out Black Girls Apparel for the Black Girl Clips Melanin Poppin over here, okay? I kind of want to tell a little bit of story, my personal experience, where I realized that colorism was an issue with me. And it's so funny, right? Because when I was buying these clips, she has some sets of clips that are grouped together, right? Like um don't touch my hair or um brown skin girl and so i was like oh i want brown skin girl and i was like but i'm not brown skin i guess i can't wear that so i was telling my friend about it and she's brown skin and she was like kelsey what are you talking about she was like you may not be as dark as me but you're a shade of brown whether that's dark brown, milk brown, caramel, macchiata, regardless, you're a type of brown. So you can wear brown skin, girl. And I was like, but what about all the other brown skin people who's gonna say, you know, you're not brown skin. She was like, you got brown in you. You can wear it. And I never thought of myself like that, right? I thought about for me, me not choosing brown skin girl is all the times where all the beautiful brown skin women weren't chosen. And I was like, am I stepping into their light? Am I stepping into, you know, their moment of me being a light skin woman and society accepting that more than our beautiful brown skin women? Am I overstepping, you know, my boundaries? And she just kind of put it in another light that, girl, you part of the brown skin family too, you know? And I was like, I never thought about that. And then I thought about how Beyonce sings brown skin girl. And I'm like, she's a light skin woman too, singing about brown skin. And my client was like, you think she's light skin? I said, home chick is light skin. She was like, I never saw her as light skin. I'm like, did you look at her in Destiny's Child? This is my color. And I, and I told them, I was like, if you put me back in the South, I am like Beyonce on a tan day. Beyonce has like an orangey, ruddy kind of tone when she's more tan. And that's exactly what I look like in the South. I'm a lot lighter here in California. Um, it's not as hot out here like that, like it is in the South, humid. I don't go outside as much. So this is honestly the lightest I have ever been in my life. Um, and so I, I never needed a tan before until I came to California, but, you know, just even thinking about that, thinking about Beyonce being a light skinned woman singing brown skinned girl. And I kind of just wanted to come on here and encourage all of my black men and all of my black women. And just to kind of, you know, let you guys know that the separation and the division that they have instilled in us when we were slaves, we gotta let that mentality go. We have to throw away the slavery mentality and thinking that someone is less black or more black or half black, boo you black, and be proud 
be proud of who you are be proud of your heritage be proud of everything that embodies you and understand that we are a culture of people that come in many colors you can have the same mom and dad and all three kids be three different colors with three different types of hair does that make them less just saying so I think this is an inward dialogue that we have to have with ourselves and about who we are and our own insecurities and our own thinking and just really pull away from that and really just redefine as a culture and as a people who we are. We are powerful. And this is why the world takes the things that we do, right? They want to take our hips, our lips, our moves, our dance, everything, our minds. That's why they tear us down mentally and make us work against each other. It is time to support each other. We can't be out here in these streets protesting or at home on our phones talking about, you know, protesting in our own way, whether that's through our arts or through our videos like this and whatever else that we do or supporting black people. If we don't actually support black people, if we don't actually come together as black people mentally, and it's time for us to stop working against one another and letting these people run over us because if we don't unify ourselves, no one's truly gonna fight for us. They're fighting right now, sure. But we have to keep that going. We have to become one. And I mean truly one people as a black society, if every other culture can support each other, if every other culture can give their money to each other, why can't we? Why can't we lift up our black brothers and sisters no matter what dichotomy of color they may be? Colorism has to be eliminated. Self-hate has to be eliminated. Our insecurities about who we are has to be eliminated and it has to be replaced with love and more specifically the love of God because he's the only one who can show you who you really are. He's the only one who can give you that full confidence to be who you are because he made you and he made you beautiful and he made you talented. He made you to do things that only you could do. Yes, people do things that you do, but only you can do what you do. So I just wanted to come on here and encourage you guys, let you guys know that I love you. I am here for you, my black brothers and sisters, no matter what or where you are on the earth. You are black and we are one and we need to support each other. So hope you hear me. If you got comments, you got questions, you got things to say, I wanna hear what you got to say. Leave a comment, like this video, share this video. I would really love for this to get out and be a real conversation that we start to have with our kids. But I'll see you guys later. I need to go to bed. <laughs> Bye.